Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Sayulahi. So for this week, we're having a very exclusive week on the spiritual experience of Hajj. We're coming to Idul Adha in this coming Friday. So for this whole week, we're going to have a whole selection of scholars and educators and special invited guests that's coming in and will talk more about their experience in Hajj. So for starting this week, what we have today is a very special guest. It's none other than Dr. Radia Salim. So Dr. Radia Salim, um, she's the founder and president of Club Heal. Dr. Radia Salim is a state path advocate of mental wellness. Club Heal began initially as a dream of hers and remained one until she witnessed her family struggling with the devastating effects of mental illness. So then she was driven by the desire to help people lead fulfilling lives, even when coping mental illness and coming to making Club Heal a reality. So up to today, there are three day rehabilitation centers throughout Singapore itself, reaching out to the Muslim community in particular. So through Club Heal, Dr. Rabia is healing minds and hearts and lives. And besides helping those living with mental illness, she works indefensibly to implement preventive strategies and to combat the stigma surrounding mental health. So let's welcome Dr. Radia Salim. Hi, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Radia. Assalamualaikum, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much for the very kind introduction. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I hope, um, you know, um, we all learn something from today, like, including myself. Okay. Yeah, there thank is you a... very much for inviting me. Thank you so much for having, um, for coming on board with us. Um, today, we love to have you here on board and to share more of your gem experience. So for this week, um, first, we're going to be focusing on the whole heart experience itself we will just like get the ball rolling so for dr radia um so i understand as well that you've been doing um uh, medical coverage for hajj pilgrims how long have you been doing it and you know it would be great if you could just share like how was it like doing your first experience doing it well i first started volunteering for the Muiz, uh, team uh, in 1999, hmm. actually, I I wanted to perform the Hajj. Then one of my friends told me, "Hey, you are a doctor. You should join the Muiz medical team. You know, you can perform the Hajj and at the same time look after the pilgrims there." So, hmm. so I applied and Alhamdulillah, I I joined as a pilgrim uh, as a medical officer for the Hajj medical mission since 1999, and I've been doing that. Um, so far, I, 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 you know, syukur lah sangat-sangat. No, I, I managed to do the Hajj 12 times. Wow. You know, uh, from 1999 and the last time, uh, right up to 2017. Uh, that was the last time I went. Yeah. So, um, in 1999, I performed my Hajj at the same uh, for the first time and at the same time I I worked as a medical officer for the Muiz team. Mm. Uh, you want me to describe my experience? Oh yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Please, by all means, how was it like your first experience? Then? Very, it must very be challenging, you know. You know, I'm at sure. that time, uh, there were 5,000 pilgrims, you know, 5,000 pilgrims. There are five of us, five doctors, and I think about 22 nurses looking after 5,000 wow. Singaporean pilgrims. Uh, wow. It was very challenging for me. Um, the part of the challenging is not so much the uh, as being a member of the medical team because we had a wonderful medical team, wonderful mm. uh, colleagues, you know, doctors, nurses, and as well as um, the uh, pilgrim officers. But uh, the challenging thing for me was uh, when I performed Hajj for the first time, uh, I was, I must say, uh, the first time I did the tawaf, you know, yeah. around the Kaaba. Mm. I felt upset because uh, when you do the part of the you, you didn't because there were so many people there, mm. so many pilgrims, and some of these pilgrims they will uh, say their zikr very loudly, you know, and that affected my concentration. Because uh, to me, it would be nice if everyone zikr in a softer voice so that we all can be focused. So um, that was very. Um, 
uh, I was a bit disappointed, but then I told myself, you know, uh, don't don't be upset, just yeah, carry maybe. on. Yeah, correct, just carry uh, on. Very correct. good teammates that uh, guided me lah. So so that was the first time, and then uh, the other challenging thing is uh, I actually fell sick lah during that when my first touch, uh, because at Arafa, you know, there were quite a lot of sick pilgrims, and then mm. I felt sick. When I was at Arafa, so when we wanted oh. to go, you know, when we wanted to move from Arafa to Mina, at that time, you know, it was so crowded, so many uh, vehicles moving out from Arafa to Mina, and the driver got lost, and you know, we just sat for hours and hours in the van. I got very, I became very unwell, felt like vomiting. So that was the two challenges uh, when, you know. When I didn't realize what Tawaf is like in the, 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 the crowd of, of people, and you know, when I actually fell sick myself. But you see, uh, as doctors and nurses, we are not we are not meant to fall sick, so we have to try to recover quickly. Alhamdulillah, at our disposal are all the medication. So you know, no matter how how sick you get, you just pick up yourself, you know, get yourself better and get back to work. going, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Well, I must say, la, nowadays, uh, doctors, nursing, you better stay home, right? COVID, you're not going to pass your germs to other people. <laughs> This a yeah. shout out right there by Dr. Yeah. Radia to all our frontliners. <laughs> yeah. So that that was uh, my experience lah. Yeah, the oh. first time is very challenging. Maybe I just uh, a bit more lah. Uh, so um, the second time I went to Hajj was in year two thousand. Okay. Uh, so nineteen ninety nine, yeah, I went again year two thousand. Year two thousand was the year that we had the most pilgrims from Singapore who actually passed away due to illness. What happened oh. in year two thousand was uh, was uh, there was this new strain of bacteria that causes meningitis. You know how when you go to Hajj, you need to take the vaccine against yep, meningo meningococcus. Yeah, yeah. The, the bacteria that can cause infection in the brain. Uh, mm. So what happened was in year 2000, a new strain appeared, you know, and a lot of people died. So that was a scary time because even though you're vaccinated, you're actually not protected 100%, you know, you're not oh, really wow. protected because of the new strain. So after that year, they developed a new vaccine for meningococcus that included the, the new strain. So at that time, you know, um, us, you know, we are constantly exposed to people who are unwell. So we are all, you know, told to take prophylactic or preventive antibiotics. So that uh, year 2000 was a bit scary. Lah. But, you know, alhamdulillah, we all, you know, got through it. But uh, sad lah, because uh, we lost more pilgrims that year. Lah. But, you know, everything is as Allah wills. Allah wills. Yeah. That's true, yeah. true. But in terms of that means then goes to show also technically your other what would be your other preventive methods then for you to stay safe or things that you the extra precautions or measures that you have to take you know ever since that experience. Oh. No, that's why right. as, as you know, you know, with COVID nineteen, we talk about mm. physical distancing and you know hygiene measures. Actually, even before COVID nineteen, there are other germs and viruses, right? Yes, yes, we need to do this all the time. Actually, and be vigilant, mm. you know. So, um, the thing about COVID nineteen, what we found out is ever since people keep their physical distance and keep stick to the hygiene measures, there's not many people out there who develop the usual cough and cold anymore. If you go to mm. GP clinics now, there's not that many patients because people are, are not infecting each other with other germs, not just COVID-19. Yeah, correct. So correct. basically, you know, hygiene measures and yeah, so like sure sharing food. This is and if you're sick, please if you're sick, you know, isolate yourself. You know, wear a mask. So that one is something that should be done all the time. But of course, uh, once we get over the COVID-19, you know, maybe we don't have to walk around with masks, but still we have to be stay vigilant. And you know, if, and if you are sick, you stay home, you get your MC, you stay home, don't pass your germs to other people, yeah, including your own family members. Okay. 
<laughs> Thank you for that though. But look, like, this is the thing, like here, like, for here right now in Singapore, yeah, like, we, we do, we need to implement the safe distancing measures. But I'm sure over there when, you know, when such things happen to you, safe distancing is a bit too, a bit difficult to achieve. Did you think so? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, uh, I want to say that, you know, of course, you know, when you go hard, everybody falls sick, you know, because <laughs> there's so many people that you go to the malls uh, and people yeah, yeah. start coughing. You know, yes. and, and chances are, that's why a lot of people fall sick, la, but the main, but uh, those who do fall sick should do the right thing and uh, wait till they're better first before entering the mosque and you know, mixing with other people. So, uh, in terms of coping with the sick, when I was uh, during the mission, our, you know, we have such a good teamwork, you know, um, we are like a family, the Muiz uh, medical mission team, you know, so okay. we help each other, we all know our roles, the doctors, the nurses, the That's important, officers, yeah. so we, alhamdulillah, even though we have a lot of patients here, we cope very well, um, the thing about uh, every Hajj mission, uh, there's always a, uh, what we call this, a uh, pre-Hajj uh, briefing for the pilgrims. Okay. So this is called the Majlis Taklimat or the pre-Hajj briefing you know, for yeah. pilgrims. So even before leaving Singapore, they would be briefed on uh, how to look after themselves, basically, you know, in, uh, from the viewpoint of health, how to keep healthy, how to avoid falling sick, and if they fall sick, what to do. So that pre-Hajj briefing is useful, but of course, when you're there, people still do fall sick. And uh, we do the best we can, uh. and that's why. And back in you see, year 1999, 2000, the earlier years, we had more field trips 5,000, <laughs> 4,000. You know, and like now, um, I think 800, 900, so much, much less now uh, compared to then. Yeah, and uh, the people who go to Hajj, uh, even though the requirement is that you're supposed to be medically fit, I mm. think. Out of ihsan lah, you know, macam kasih chan lah. Even people with chronic illnesses, even people with cancer and and you know, uh, end stage renal failure on dialysis are actually allowed to perform the hajj. Oh. So that's why. So for those with pre-existing serious illnesses, I think going to hajj can be quite challenging for them. But you know what? I I want to uh, relate a story lah. There's a story oh, of see, see, see. a couple. Okay. And this couple, the husband's got cancer stage four, right? Yeah. The wife has got diabetes. So the wife is supposed to look after the husband. But now the funny thing is at the heart, the one who fell sick most of the time is the wife who had diabetes. The yeah. husband who had cancer stage four, I don't know, maybe he's so <laughs> calm or what, he hardly fell sick. You know, I was expecting to have to look after him because I met this couple at the polyclinic before they left for Hatch. So I was, you know, thinking all the more, you know, got got a you know, he will sit, yeah. But it turns out that, you know, the one with the very serious illness is well and the maybe I don't know, the wife being the caregiver, maybe she's stressed out. Maybe, you know, maybe, because maybe. She possible. has to look at the husband. So that's why it's not just about physical health, it's the emotional and mental health is very important as well. That is a very good point though that you bring it up because it's not just the physical that's why people always take 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 it for granted sometimes they think that they are all physically they're physically well then they think that nothing will go wrong then maybe they don't really take these um safety precautions or measures that's very true but you know that's the thing like um what were those have you ever experienced before um those who are sick but at the same time they still really want to like complete their their hard routine like how do you how do you mm. tackle that like how do you advise them because you know you know it's not to their best interest of their health if they were to continue mm. Yeah. Um, actually, um, uh, you mean, yeah, lah, that means they push themselves, mm. uh, even though they're very unwell. Mm. I think in the end, everyone will find out that his or her own limits, lah, you know, so, uh, we can only advise and, and, you know, suggest, give suggestions, but we cannot force people, but, um, you know, each one of us, we have to listen to our body, you know. Because mm. if you're unwell and then you push yourself to do it, you might become fall, become very, very sick, you know, and then you cannot. Because when you're unwell, 
some you cannot focus on the heart itself. You are in pain. You are you know you are coughing. Is that how to focus? So in order to be able to focus well, you need to be physically healthy. Lah. So I advise people, but in the end, it's up to them, of course. Mm. Yeah. So, but of course, we want to be encouraging, lah. So we we'll give them tips on how to get yourself better first, and then you can, you know, go back to performing the rituals. I think. Uh, I don't know. Shall we talk about? Mm, I'm waiting for your questions actually. <laughs> I've got yeah, a lot to say actually. Oh know. yeah, no, by all means, uh, right? If you want to chip in, just chip uh, in. Oh okay. Uh, yes, yes. Alright, alright. Um. Uh, lessons from the heart, uh, yeah. There yeah. are many people. Although we advise people to go for medical checkup while in Singapore, some mm. people don't do that, you know. And then mm. when you they go to Hajj for the first time, they discover eh, they have diabetes, or they didn't know they've got high blood pressure. And then at Hajj, they develop high blood pressure. I don't yeah. know, maybe at Hajj, maybe they're not eating well because you know down there you have to eat the hotel food, you know sometimes, and the hotel food can be very rich, you know. Uh, and then you know you might not. Uh, you might end up eating uh, not very healthy food, and you know the diabetes uh, manifests itself for the first time. So at Hajj, we have treated people. Uh, uh, the Hajj team has treated people who, for the first time, you know during Hajj, that is where they found out that they have diabetes. Or, for example, maybe they develop a wound, and then the wound turn mm. into an abscess. You know, macam menana like that. Mm. And then when we check the sugar, it are the diabetes, and they didn't even know they have diabetes. You know? So, so that's why it is so important uh, to even before going to Hajj to go for a medical checkup to find out whether you have any illness. Or not. You know, they have diabetes or anything like, or high blood pressure or what. Because mm. if you are diagnosed for the first time there, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's more difficult because, you know, although we have a clinic, we are equipped to more to treat for acute illnesses like cough and colds and diarrhea and so forth. Not so much for the chronic illness. Mm. Although the good thing about Mecca and Medina, there are a lot of pharmacies. So yes, you can start treatment even if we don't bring the medication from Singapore. We can write a prescription. They can go okay. to the pharmacy good. and they can buy. And then we help them monitor the diabetes. But That's you know, good. if possible, wouldn't it be good if you know, you're fit in the first place, you know? And, and even if you do have chronic illness, it's well managed, well controlled. The sugar control is good. The blood pressure is good so that when you do go there, you remain well. Mm. So it's very important. And uh, in terms of uh, preparation uh, for heart, yeah. uh, think, oh, as long as I got the money and I know how to do the rituals, uh, that's good enough. That is not good enough. You must be prepared yeah. physically, mentally, emotionally for the heart. So physical, you know, get used to walking long distances because at the Hajj you have to walk, you know, do the tawaf, do mm. the sa'i, and then you know the distance, you know, in Mina when you have to do the uh, lonta jamra stone throwing, uh, uh, it's yeah. quite a distance to walk. So if you get used to walking long distance, brisk walking in Singapore, when you go there, it's easier. Mentally, be mentally prepared. Like me lah, in a sense, I wasn't mentally prepared. Remember, you're there with people from all over the world with all sorts of behavior. So you know, don't that is true, though. people to behave like Singaporeans lah. So people they will recite very loudly and they're very protective, you know, towards their own pilgrims. They will mm. show so that yeah, they, they will huddle in groups, right? And then like yeah, huddle in group and then yeah. you know they will not give way. And so mm. you must be mentally prepared for all That's that. True. I wish someone told me, you know, that you know it's not so easy. You know, it's very crowded and then, but uh, see, I wasn't mentally prepared that way. But if you're mentally prepared, then it's okay and and emotionally too. You know, uh, a lot of people go there. They're very anxious. You know, they. Uh, some people are uh, they have waited many years to go to the Hajj. They have, you know, uh, kumpul kumpul can do it, you know, to go to Hajj. So they yeah. say, I go there, I must do the Hajj, but I must do all the sunat, sunat, umrah, sunat. I must do at least six times. I must this, I must that. So 
that creates a lot of anxiety you know i must make full use of the hajj you know bila lagi nak pergi you know so must perform as many to umrah sunat as possible so that start that creates the anxiety so that's why apart from uh, financial and preparation and preparing for the future be prepared physically get yourself to be physically fit mentally and emotionally you know, and Ikhlas lah, ikhlas, 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 you know, yeah, go, I, I, I always say, go for quality, don't go for quantity, you know, mm. jangan tak <laughs> nak, want to do as much as possible, but whatever you do, you do it, you know, perfect, to your best. Yeah, you correct. know, you do it in a very calm manner, so that you get the benefit lah, insyaAllah lah, from Hajj, so, yes, you You know, and then like um yeah, yeah. and and anxiety the and you know the carefulness to perform as many rituals possible that one that one is not so healthy. <laughs> I hear I hear and many stories. One that. is the distraction. Alama over there, all the shops are shopping, the food, uh, you know, and the uh, these are all distractions. Uh, so. You have to be mentally mindful, lah. Yeah. Prepared, lah. So that's true. That's true. Yeah. And like, okay. and then the the let's say of course, like you know, if you go with people and not just like the people in the like other people from across the world, but even the people that you're going with, you know, you really need to inculcate patience mm. in you and just um really be the be ikhlas, like sincere, lah, like what you just mentioned just now. You know, heart mm. is meant to be a beautiful experience. You know, it's about all the ummah all coming together. You know, Correct. not just with fellow Singaporeans, but from people from all over the world. You know, it's 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 meant to be a wonderful, wonderful experience. So, mm. it's about care, looking after yourself, but it's also mm. about looking after, uh, mm. caring for the your fellow pilgrims. Mm. So That's true. to me, uh, it's always good to give way, give way, kasih chan, kasih orang. You know, um. Patient and and you know when you I I I I must say uh, when when I was there and I look at our Singaporean pilgrims, some are wonderful wonderful shining examples. They really look out for their roommates who are unwell. You know they look out for the pegawai. You know they will look after each other. And this That's person good. may not even be family member. No? Mm. It's just a, a friend that they met because they are put together in the same room. Because same group, right? So, yeah. I'm very heartened when I see people like that, you know, oh, uh, very supportive each other. But uh, unfortunately, on the other hand, there are people who are not not as as uh, caring towards others as <laughs> you like them to be. And you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe I mean, not nice to be judging, but they seem appear to me as a you know just caring about themselves and not caring for their fellow fellow pilgrims. Because I think Hajj is not about just about us relationship right. between us and Allah but it's also the relationship between us and our fellow Muslims from Singapore and the rest of the world so it's about um, looking after ourselves and looking after ourselves. so if you're unwell and you're coughing away badly please don't go to the mosque <laughs> it's as simple as that you know Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, that, that's that's true. caring for others, you know. You may lose out all the money, tak dapat semayang in the mosque lah. But you know, cannot sort of. But then you are looking not just at yourself, but you are looking at others. Hmm. I think we 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 what have has happened from COVID nineteen and heart is never going to be the same ever again. I think the authorities in Saudi Arabia they will make sure. Even next time after the COVID, ah, they see anybody call for that, no entry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's more, you know, no, no more safe mouth. entry. Uh, so, but yeah, but you know, um, doesn't matter. It's good that you mentioned about that also. So thank you right now. Yes, because we have all the COVID nineteen and things are very different right now. Like in your opinion, like in your perspective, right? Like how is um Raya this year with that Hajj? Like what are the lessons that we can actually learn from it? Mm-hmm. Uh, so Hajj, I don't know. I did not hear is the Hari Raya sacrifice, isn't it? So it's all about sacrifice. So sacrifice in the broader sense, lah. I mean, we think back to what uh, Prophet Ibrahim alaihissalam 
is willing to sacrifice, you know, his own son and his, you know, prophet Ismail al willing to have his life taken for Allah's sake. So, it's ultimately, it's just about sacrifice. So, cannot go this year, never mind. <laughs> I said, you know, because of COVID, we all, we Muslims, we cannot be selfish. We want to do what we want to do. We have to think about the rest of the world, you know. That's so true. That's, um, Allah will reward us for all our sacrifices, you know. So we cannot go to the mosque, pray at home, you know, do the korban. See, korban, we cannot do the slaughtering of the uh, korban animals in Singapore. But it's okay, mm. korban in other countries. And then the meat is sent to people who really, mm. you know, the... Maybe. So I think that's why there's a lot of blessings behind COVID-19. So that we all learn the true meaning of sacrifice. You know? Yes. Uh, you know, there's one question you wanted to ask me, whether I experienced, uh, what is it? Uh, someone dying there. Yes, correct. I didn't want to ask you on that. Like, um, yeah. So um, have you ever, because you did mention a bit just now, right? Experiencing someone who actually died while performing Hajj. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I had, I remember there was uh, someone, I'd, I've never even met this guy, but what happened is one one, one morning, or early in the morning, I was asked to go to uh, a hotel room. Uh, apparently, the husband has died. He died from a heart attack, but the wife couldn't accept that the husband has died. Uh, has passed on because what happened apparently uh, at the night before he developed some chest pains they wanted to take him to a hospital or the clinic but he didn't want to maybe sometimes people know you know when the time is really near he didn't want mm. to and then what happened was he died uh, in the hotel room you know so but because uh, it was unexpected uh, so the wife couldn't accept that he's already passed on so so then I went to the room and then there's a crowd of people there and then wife there and then I went to I then I, I checked uh, the body and then I said to the wife, you know, Haja, your husband Sudah Pulang ke Rahmatullah has gone return to Allah. So and then she broke down and then she cried and then she could accept. So that was quite um emotional for me as well, you know, because uh, it's not easy to lose a spouse la, during mm. Hajj. So that was, you know, but I must say, no one actually collapsed in front of me. I've been 12 times, so I've never <laughs> experienced someone right in front of me collapse and then I have to do, I don't know, maybe uh, the other doctors have. Uh, I'm, I'm just, in a way, fortunate, la, I suppose. Um, and then there was another case of... Uh, lady she had a uh, stage four cancer mm. she was in a lot of pain we tried our best la, to help her comfort her give her much more tea, you know give her painkillers and all mm. that mm. but in the end she she died she died in hospital la. and then and then uh, in year 2000 uh, there was the year when there was this new strain of meningitis yeah. very sad you know i saw this man at our clinic and then mm. he had high fever la. so i you know we suggested he go to hospital you know and then he he died in hospital and then it's very difficult for the wife la. but she said saya redo, saya redo, you know so you know um but you know what death happens and it's not as if you want to die you know some people say hey, bagus lah very good lah die in Mekah Tanah Suci but to me uh, wherever you die whether it's in Mekah or in Singapore or in Medina or wherever it is the main thing is what we want is Husnul Husnul Khatima isn't it a good death and I guess if you go to a Hajj that's Husnul Khatima <laughs> but even if you don't go to Hajj in Singapore you can achieve Husnul Khatima and Death is, Alhamdulillah, no, with us Muslims, death is just simply returning to Allah, you know, it's just entering the barza. So, yes, we feel sad that we've lost our loved one, but, you know, we know that they're on to the next stage. And, you know, every every one of us will taste that. <laughs> so, so, it happens. It happens. It's sad, but... Kita reda lah, kita reda, you know, um, that's the beauty of 
uh, having the faith and having a firm belief, you know, in Allah and in Allah's Rahmah. Mm, that's true. Uh, true. So, um, I have another question I also want to ask you. Um, like, what can we also learn from your other experience in dealing with the uh, sick people during Hajj? Uh, oh, uh, what can we learn? In mm. dealing with uh, sick people during Hajj. Hajj. Oh, also, so, so for example, your family member and then your your friend or your family member is unwell. Mm. Uh, the main thing is uh, when people are unwell, you know, show that you care. Don't don't give the message to them that they're just a burden. You know, some people they feel Allah, they're sakit. Jadi aku tak boleh pergi masjid. I cannot go to the mosque. I must bring her to the Muiz clinic. This that this that that will. You know, because you must, we can sense, you know, if someone view us as a burden. Because looking after sick people is ibadah too, you know. That's true. You get rewarded for it, you know. Yeah. That's why, I know, you know, the thing about going to Hajj as a medical officer or as a nursing officer or as a pilgrim officer, they say, ah, oh, you know, you cannot perform the ibadah, not the same, you cannot perform as the other, you know, the ordinary pilgrim. But, you know, I, I take it in a positive light. La. I have two things to do. One is my duty to, you know, help people who are unwell during the Hajj. And the other one is my duty in performing the Hajj itself. So maybe I cannot do the Umrah Sunnah and cannot go to the mosque often. But, you know, being in the clinic, looking after unwell people, that's an act of ibadah too. And that is very rewarding. It's very rewarding when you see people get better, you know. And, uh, uh, so uh, my my take is show kindness, show compassion, help your loved one, your friend, seek help, you know, show them tender loving care because they are sad, you know, they want to do the ritual but they cannot because they fall sick over yes, there. Yes, that's true. It's not easy on them also. It's not easy on them. Yeah. So, and when they feel that they're cared for and loved, the recovery is faster because they, you know, uh, do peduli kan aku, you know, they care about me, and then they be motivated. Yeah, motivated you know? to get better, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So, it's good on them. I, I always use the same old acronym, lah. The do it, you know, do it, do it, not money, you know, do it is doa, usha, uh, ikhlas and istiqamah and tawakkal. So that's Shall. the for any challenge, lah, including the challenge of falling unwell. So, uh, and for those who fall unwell, please listen to doctor's advice, please listen to nurse advice. Kita bilang sleep, you know, take the medicine, go to sleep, sleep early, okay? <laughs> yes, sleep there's a reason why. Sleep. A lot of people fall sick because they don't have enough sleep, you know. Mm. They want to do the ibadah and then they can't come out to do shopping, you know, because I got a lot of pesanan, pesanan, you know, a lot of requests. You know, I, 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 I must say, uh, one of the things that happen to pilgrims when they announce that they want to go to Hajj, mm. unfortunately, there's, there'll be some people say, hey, can you get me this, get me this, 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 a whole long list. So, you know, pening kepala, no, alamak, amana, I have to buy all these things. So, for people who are not going to Hajj, please do not burden the pilgrim by you know, giving a long list of the Shopping things that list. you want to be bought <laughs> from the shops in Mecca and Medina, you know. Unless, of course, the pilgrim can say, hey, uh, what would you like me to get you, you know. So, that's different lah. That's Ayol, true. You know, so, because they go to Hajj, they're remembering their family and close friends and they want to get something back. But, uh, yeah. so, that's why, you know, and, um, I want yes. to say, uh, people... We can get distracted lah doing hajj when you go to the shop. Ooh, a lot of bargains here and there. I don't know. I, I, I think when you go to the hajj, you have to you have to focus on the ibadah. And yeah, the other things. That's a, a test itself, you know. Also, <laughs> yeah. Even though we are allowed to do go shopping all that, you know, mm. everything in moderation lah. Yes, in moderation, right. you know. But the main thing is you want to look after your hajj yourself and your fellow pilgrims. Mm, mashallah, that's a really good advice, Dr. Radia. <laughs> really, really. <laughs> Are there any um, forms of distraction? Sorry, just another question. Um, is there any other forms of distractions that we are talking about yeah. apart from, you know, shopping? And the, the food, lah. <laughs> 
and uh, I don't know what. Oh, you know, oh, this one I said the crowds, the crowds. Do not be disheartened uh, by the. Actually, when I see the crowds, I I sort of feel happy. Ramanya orang Islam, there's so many, many Muslims people. in the world. Feel happy yeah. lah, you know. So you, yeah. But uh, at the same time, it is challenging when you want to do the tawa. Especially the tawaf. Sa'i is not so bad, but when you want to do the tawaf, oh, oh, really crowded, you know. So we we need to, you know, uh, find the right time to do all this. I want to say there's another thing that especially women get very very anxious about. Okay, why is that? About the, the period, you know, you all oh, oh, I'm gonna get my period. I cannot do the tawaf and the sa'i, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. um. Uh, Maybe actually, uh, right now, uh, on TV, uh, channel five, mm. there's a Tanya Doctor Emilda. Have you all heard of Doctor Emilda? She's a gynae, you know. I oh, watch her know. program too. She's very good. <laughs> now the thing about uh, uh women uh, and getting mm. their periods, mm. most women will have regular periods. Mm. You know, it's only when you're stressed up, your periods might be regular, might, might not come or be delayed or what, you know. So if you're calm and cool, your periods are good. You can you can know when you will get your period so that you know then you can time it properly. So I I know a lot of women ask for medication to stop the period. Mm. Um, and I actually don't like to do that, you no, know, but I, I guess I don't want to disappoint them and I can understand the anxiety, so I still prescribe. But the best way is to keep calm, relax. You know, keep calm so that your periods come on time. Then you know when you can go, when you cannot go. You know, but of course, lah, for those who are already menopausal, lagi senang lah. Don't have to think yes. about all that. <laughs> Just yeah. stress free. Stress free, yeah. So right. I guess if you are given the opportunity to do hard at hard at a younger age, why not? But you know, uh, kalau tidak, you can sabar, you know, and, and you don't have to worry about such things. And then you, you know, it's very easy and calm. You, 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 you that's trade off lah. Orang muda, young people, they're stronger lah. You know, the older, maybe we have some arthritis and all that. Mm. I want to say, uh, some older people are very strong because you know why? They're mentally right. and emotionally very strong. They're very determined and they can do it and they prepare themselves well, you know? Mm, that's so, true. So, funny thing, uh, you expect the older people to come to the clinic. I see a lot of young people coming to the clinic too and <laughs> becoming a well. So, there's a trade-off uh, in terms of age. Yeah, I see like, the story of that lady and her husband who had stage four cancer. Yeah, that's why right. very unexpected. It's always the unexpected cases that comes to you. Yeah. Because I could see the two of them. The wife is the the one who's anxious, and he's so calm. So he hardly falls sick, and she kept falling sick. So he ended up looking after well. her, and not she looking after him. Yeah. That's a lot. Importantly, is that what you were saying? Eh? Um, you need to like prepare yourself mentally. It's just very mentally important, also emotionally, emotionally as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and spiritually, it's not just the rituals. Spiritually, is to you know, lillahi taala. Focus, focus. This is for Allah. Yeah. Mm. That's true. Uh, the you know the so yeah it's good though because oh, yeah you, I want yeah. to say one more thing you know the concept of ihram you know when you go to Hajj you have to wear ihram no? mm. then the thing about ihram is not just about you know you know to talk aurat and all that you cannot cut your nails and all that mm. it's not mm. just that you know mm. to me it's also about you know not arguing not fighting not and uh, not you know you know have uh, unclean thoughts. thoughts yes, so correct. that that thing, uh, you have to be very and be focused on God. You know, when you are you really to be focused. So, to me, uh, Iram is a training for us. So even when we are out of Iram, we should try our best to not argue with anyone, <laughs> not to have unclean thoughts and and all that. You no, know? even uh, you know, of course, uh, then you can. You know, so aside from the physical thing, the spiritual, emotional, mental benefits of Ihram should extend beyond the period when you are in the Ihram. Shawa, Just yeah. want to add that. 
That is true. That is very important. This is something that we all should also le learn to pick up and apply, you know, not just specifically for that period of time only, but to the rest of our lives as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We're so imperfect as humans, but we, we try. We, we try. And we try, you know. Importantly, try. We, we remind ourselves again and again and again every day. And, and, and yeah. That's true. Yeah. Hey, uh, what the uh, uh, yeah? So technically, you, had, you mentioned all the the I mean the, the few challenges you mentioned you know, about all that. So technically, of all this, what would be the most biggest challenge that you feel that they face? You know, doing this hajj, like mm. the most common one, the most biggest one, the biggest uh, one that they will face. Uh, what would be your advice for them? To be faced? I think the most. I think the most the biggest challenge is the challenge of. I think anxiety. <laughs> That you know, the the anxiety because when when we are anxious, mm. you know we cannot sleep well, we don't eat well, we are more likely to become unwell, and you're worried about this, worried about that, you know. So take the anxiety out of you by focusing on Allah, doing this for yourself, but more importantly, you doing this to. Get apa supaya Allah reda lah to get hmm. Allah to accept your heart. You know that's what you want, isn't it? Haji yeah, mabrur. <laughs> we don't know, you Inshallah, know. Inshallah. And 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 to me, Haji mabrur is not just you know during the hajj. Be, beyond the hajj, bila balik continue. Yes. <laughs> so the behavior. That's balik, true, <laughs> isn't it? If you're at the heart, you're you know you're very good, and then you barely, and then there's no improvement, and you know you become worse. Then no mabru there. Mabru stop already. Yeah. So um, I think the so anxiety is the main thing that you know mm. make people unwell, and um, you know so try to uh, achieve calm to yourself. I'm just. I'm I'm just a humble servant servant of Allah. I'm here to perform the fifth pillar of Islam. Mm. Alhamdulillah, uh, the day has finally arrived. And oh Allah, you know I come to you. Labbaik uh, Allahumma labbaik. I come to you. You know the call to Hajj. So with all um, sincerity and fervor, but not no anxiety, not not anxious lah. Mm. Not anxious because. He said, even in Iran, the takut, you know, you see, uh, if things happen, let's say, uh, accidentally you do something wrong, mm. Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. I'm sure Allah will still accept, you know, because he didn't mean, you know, macam kita, you know, when we are fasting, sekali termakan, terminum, you know, forgot lah, you know, then it's still valid, isn't it, the fast. So, basically, focus on the hajj. Uh, focus, uh, look after yourself, look after your photo pilgrims, take out all the anxiety. No need, don't be kiasu, want to do as many, uh, you know, do what you can listen to your body and do uh, in moderation. Moderation. Uh, with, with a calm, uh, hopeful uh, attitude. Yeah. Sure. Hoping for Allah to redol the hush. Yeah, so, so practice even before the Hajj, huh? mm. the preparation is so important. Remember, not just the money and the rituals, but it's all those things. The physical preparation, mental, emotional, yep. That's, that's, that's really good, Michelle, Dr. Radia. Your <laughs> advice is back to back. Because <laughs> really. it's not a holiday, it's Hajj. <laughs> So yeah, that's a liner that we need to emphasize, ah, uh, to. <laughs> so, like, that's true. Better than holiday is wonderful. Yes. On the and I, I must say, a lot of people who've been there, they want to go again, again, again yeah, because they, they feel it, you know. Mm, of course, ah, uh, but always think, ah, lah, kasi chat nora lain, ah, because limited on the quota, especially now with COVID nineteen, ah, uh, mm. I don't think they're going to allow large numbers anymore. So. We patiently await our turn, and you know. Yeah lah. Now it's the new normal. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes lah. Uh, how things unfold in time. Uh, but yeah, but Dr. Radia, do you have anything else that you want to actually advise the uh, um the pilgrims or you know in in short while in the future? future. Yeah, for future yes. or, mm, or even those right now also you know 
or those who are here that they cannot perform for certain reasons, anything that you want to advise on them? Advice is uh, the most important thing is to correct your intention or niat. Lah. So yeah. every deed, every ibadah starts from the niat. So the niat, if the niat is towards Allah, then Allah will, you know, reward you according to our niat. Lah. So keep your intention pure. Uh, don't feel that, you know, some people say, ah, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Mm. I just feel now is as good a time as any, you know, because it, 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 once you know you have the financial means, mm. you know, and physically you're fit, then get yourself ready mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and go for it, you know. But patiently await your turn because this is what is it, seru, lah, you know, uh, Allah knows best. We can plan, but Allah is the best of planners. He's the best planner, yes, he's the planner. Yeah. So keep your intentions pure and I don't know, is it too early to wish everybody uh, Selama Hari Raya Aidil Adha? <laughs> Never too early, Dr. Radia. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a beautiful experience, once in a lifetime experience and yeah, look forward to it, lah. work towards it. Yeah, and keep the int intentions pure, that's all I have to say. <laughs> That's important, lah. Intentions, you know, be it everything that you do, the intentions matter a lot, lah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, sister Natasha, anything yes. else? Um, <laughs> yeah, we should do much on okay, almost like an hour already. Thank you so much, Dr. Oh. Radia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pleasure, Alhamdulillah. You know, it's always a pleasure having you on board and sharing with us with your experience and all. And we always love having you. On, mm -hmm. um, and thank you so much again for you know all your advices and all your stories and all everything that you shared with us. Uh, inshallah, may this benefit everyone who's staying tuned, who are listening to us tonight. Yeah. yeah. So on uh, that, Doctor Radia, inshallah, we'll see you again. Um, thank you so much for coming on board. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Right. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikum 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 All right, so thank you everyone once again. So that was Dr. Radia Salim. Um, so concluding in Dr. In Hajj. So for this whole week, we're having this special exclusive of Hajj spiritual experience, sorry, spiritual experience in Hajj. But in the main underlying tone is that we are actually campaigning for our beautiful, beautiful hospital in Senegal project. So um, this whole week, um, you know, we do need your help and your kind contributions to help us with our this uh, our running project, um, you know, you can go to launchgroup.com slash Senegal Hospital. You can learn more about the, the phases of the hospital that is in right now and how um, it's going to contribute over 30,000 men, women and children over in Senegal. So with that, thank you everyone for staying tuned and we'll see you, you inshallah tomorrow. Do stay tuned. We also do have Ustad Amin as well. We'll be talking about more about his spiritual experience journey from Termin to Makkah. So once again, thank you everyone and have a good night.